as you can see, rack extensions take up a lot of space, nearly 65 gigs worth. I've got this preset folder, which is nearly 40 gig. Anturia, that takes over 20 gig. And I've got this, uh, the real VST folder on my C drive, nearly 20 gig. Sound banks, well, usually Reason sound banks are around about the three gig mark. Okay, I've got nine gig, but I've got three installs of Reason, and that's why that's a little bit higher. And believe it or not, in your documents, if you've got a lot of VSTs, they actually do save, again, a lot of presets off. Um, as default in your C drive, well, in your documents, and these are all on my C drive. So in total, there's nearly 160 gigs worth of data sitting on my C drive. And let's have a quick look at my C drive. And my C drive size, totally, is only 118 gigabyte big. So how can that be? Hello there Reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. So at the beginning you saw I had loads of drives all pointing at my C drive but really all that data is actually sitting on my D drive and I've tricked the system in thinking it's on my C drive. So applications like Reason which you cannot choose where things like the rack extensions go or the sound banks or you may have decided like once upon a time you started to, to do installs like myself, like say with the Antura stuff, and now I needed to start to run out of space and I needed to shift it off. So rather than install it, I could sort of trick the system basically. That's what we're kind of doing. And I'm gonna go through that very quickly to start with, and then I will actually explain it a lot more in detail. In the description of this video, you would see there's gonna be a number of locations. Unfortunately, when we post these command lines out, um, they tend to get word wrapped around. So do make note of them. It's quite important, usually with the spacing and all the rest of it, if not things can go wrong. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go in and locate my um, rack extension directory, and I'm then gonna copy that and I'm, or in fact, I'm actually gonna move it, not copy it, that's very important. I'm gonna move it over to my D drive, and then we're gonna set up a junction between the two, or some people call it a symbolic link. So I'm just gonna bring my keyboard down just so I can see things. So as I say, all these locations will be available. Um, so you don't have to remember all this or see what I'm typing in here at the moment, and we can sort of cheat a bit. So that's where I need to go to. And where I actually went to, if you notice, I actually typed in the percentage app data. Well, percentage app data sort of resolves itself to this, your user location where, you know, who you are, app data roaming. But I'll go through that in the detail. So here's my one that says rack extension. What's important here is when I right click it, I'm gonna select cut, not copy. Make sure you select cut. And then I'm gonna go to my D drive and I'm gonna choose a, a, a folder or a location on here. And what I do as my work in practice, I actually go in, I create a new folder called MK link, and I'll explain why I call it MK link a little bit later. And then in here, I'm just gonna go right click and I'm gonna choose paste. Um, I've actually cut my <laughs> rack extension folder down because it was, to say it was over 60 gigs, just so for speed. And that's it here. It's now, we've now moved it from the C drive onto the D drive, but, Reason doesn't know anything about it. So if I start uh, Reason up, it's gonna say, oh, these rack extensions are missing and obviously we've got to download them. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go down into my um, search bar here and I'm gonna type in the word command. Let me just move that out of the way again. I'm gonna bring it down in a second. And it's important that you run this as an administrator. I can click there or I could even right click up here and choose run as administrator. It's important though that you run this as administrator, you're prompted, say yes. You know you're actually on the administrator prompt because it says administrator obviously at the very top of the window and it's always gonna take you to Windows System 32. If you start up the command prompt normally, it will actually take you to see kind of user slash and your username if that's your default location. Now the command we actually wanna type in here is, and I say I'm gonna make sure all these commands are available for you. It's gonna be mklink slash j, because I've created a junction. So this is what we've just copied, or sorry, we moved. Um, so we were from Propellerhead Software Rack Extensions, and that's where I moved it to. So I'm just gonna hit return on my keyboard. You can see it's created the junction. So this app data is now expanded to its proper full name, which is users, your username, app data roaming. And it's told me it's created it. Obviously, if I try and create it again, it's gonna give me a little error saying that the file already exists. Now, 
this is it. Basically, all you have to do now is start up Reason and everything's gonna start working. So let me just first of all give you this gotcha before you sort of turn off. I've talked people through this before and they've gone through it and they've set it up and they've gone brilliant. The next day they've come back in, they've looked at their C drive and gone, oh, I've got all these files here. And basically they've decided to um, delete them. So if we come back here again and Let's quickly go um, percent app data. Whoops, I can't see the screen, so let's just pull that down there. And then go to propeller head software. You can see here's our rack extension. This is now, as I say, a junction, but when we click on it, we can see everything. And so people have come back in the next day and have gone, oh, I'm back on my C drive. Here's all these files. I don't need them. I've already moved them over to my other directory. I can delete them out. But no, you cannot. Because this is now like, this is how we cheat the system. So this is what Reason sees. It comes in, it's looking at the C drive. It sees these files, it opens them up. Everything's working normally. But this is an, 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 an image. This is not really here. This is still on your D drive. So I can delete from this directory. I can add to it. I can modify files in this directory. And when I do, I'm also modifying the files over in our D colon backslash MK link backslash rack extensions. So where are we? So there it is. So let me just do, I'm gonna do a right click and say open new window here. And so if I double click on that and make that a bit smaller. There, you can see it's a copy. So this is on my D drive. This is actually on my C drive. And you can see we've got the same files. So the way my Explorer is set up at the moment, sorry. There, that's what I'm trying to look for. <laughs> white on white on white, you can't see where the lines are. But there we go. So it is actually a replica. And if I actually uh, right click on here and say, oh, I'm gonna do a new text document. Here we go. You can see it instantly it's appeared over here. And if I type the word Fred in over here and hit enter, you can see it's automatically straight away called Fred over there and I'm actually on two different drives. So just bear that in mind, yeah? So this is how it actually works. And that's how simple it was to set up. It's just a simple case, as I say, of doing a move. Make sure you do a move because when you actually, if you try and drag um, a folder from one drive to another drive, it will copy it. If you drag a folder from one drive or the drive back to itself to a different directory, it moves it automatically. But when you go across drives, it actually does a copy. So make sure you do a move. And then it is a simple case of actually just putting these commands in, like um, I've said in the description, you can go and pull them out. Now, for me, um, and I'm not gonna say this is best practices or anything else, I actually call the directory where I'm going to MK link simply because when I'm in file manager and I'm looking say and I'm browsing through my files as soon as I see MK link I know instantly that these all these folders have actually been linked from somewhere else usually my C drive what I also do within this directory is I've actually created a file called MK link.txt and in there I put all the commands I've actually run over time and actually this command here and this command here are exactly the same commands. As I said, this special little symbol I put in, what's percentage app data percentage, actually resolves itself to C colon users, your username, app data, roaming. So it actually resolves to that. So these are one and the same thing. But as you can see, we can move sound banks. It's quite important for things like, because the propeller head software's got a space in it, that you do use the quotes either side. If you don't use the quotes, um, and actually you typed in all of this without the quotes, it will actually give you an error because there's actually more parameters than it'll expect. And it's that straightforward. Now, as I said, I put them inside um, MK link. I was a bit lazy with my rack extensions because I've just dropped them straight in, MK link rack extensions. But other things, I do try and put a, a, be a bit more sensible. So from program data, I've got Anturia stuff. So I put that into another subdirectory called program data and then Anturia under my MK link. Uh, and you probably see that I've done that for my sound banks. So that's again goes under there. So if we actually go to the file system, might make a bit more sense. So there's my programs data. 
and here's the files. So I know that this originally came from C drive program data and these are the subfolders. And the same going further up, I've got some other stuff which I've obviously I've copied off because they're quite big stuff. You know, like Coral's quite an interesting one because Coral itself actually has the ability that I could install, install it onto the D drive and it installs everything else onto the D drive, but Coral and that come with a lot of um, add-on programs. And these add-on programs, uh, a lot of them I found, because they're written by a lot of third parties, can be a little bit lazy and they don't look to see if you've actually moved the proper install directory. So they still try and install things onto the C drive. So I found by, well, yeah, let's go and install it on the C drive, use my um, MK link and I can move it across. And yeah, Bob's your uncle, everything works. Uh, and they're quite hefty size um, programs. You can move all kinds of programs over. You don't actually have to leave it. You know, you just don't have to leave them on your C drive. So just to wrap things up, I will put in a link to this particular page up on Reason Talk. It's the handy reference. So it actually has a lot of file locations listed for you if you weren't sure where bits and bobs of reasons are actually installed. Um, it's also worth going through some of the threads. It's like I know I made a comment here that um, because now obviously there's reason suite, so reason suite starts appearing all over the place. That's really the only funny one. So if you never had reason 11 suite, then you don't have to worry about it too much. But and other people have updated things throughout. But as I say, it's just a, a good little page to know about. Um, just so you can learn where things are actually installed on your system. So all that's left for me to say is uh, thank you for watching and bye for now. <laughs>